Hello! In this video, I'm gonna be going over a very cruel Backrooms level. It's called level negative 399, also known as the cruelest trick played on mankind. And this one is one of those levels that gives you a sense of false hope. It makes you think that you have escaped the hellscape of the backrooms, but you haven't. This one's a doozy, and I love a good old doozy. If you also love doozies, leave a like, enjoy the video. And without any more talking or doozy jokes, let's get into the video, shall we? Backrooms level negative 399 does not have a classification graphic because it is told in a short story style format. But if I had to give it one, I'd give it a class 3 or 4, just for how sad it is. For the sake of this video, I will first do a short explanation of the level's layout, its features, and all that stuff like I usually do, and then I will read the paragraphs that the level has directly from the fandom because the entire thing is in a paragraph format. I'll give you the rundown first, then read them. Let's go. Level negative 399 has a pretty unique number. If you remember, the regular positive level 399, or the Neon Paradise, or as it used to be called, the Promised Land, is a famous level. And essentially, that level was a safe, habitable place that might have actually had the exit to the backrooms inside. It was a really famous level, and it still is, and it's one of those levels that everybody reveres. It's supposed to be the main way that you might be able to get back to reality and leave the backrooms. And this supposed way that you do get back to reality from the positive level 399 is by following specific tasks on papers that you find there. And once you've done all the tasks, you come back, you find a red button on that level, you press it, and you end up in your home. That's also how you enter this level, level negative 399. You do everything right, you follow all those instructions and all the steps, you don't mess up, and you make it back to the regular 399, you click that button, and you're sent here to its negative copy, not home to reality. Level negative 399 has been described as an exact copy of our Earth, down to the smallest details. The level at the beginning will take the appearance of normal level 399 because that's where you came from. It's this arcade building with its mall-like layout and everything like that. This level is described as a sub-level of a sub-level, and it resembles Earth in every single fashion. After you leave the beginning of negative 399, you will walk out the doors and you will enter reality, quote-unquote, in the exact same place as you were when you originally no-clipped into the backrooms. Everyone you knew from reality will still be there, your friends, your family, all that stuff, and it'll be as if you didn't miss anything. You're just right back in that exact same spot where how things used to be. All the people, all the animals, they all play their exact role from real life. If you have a sibling, if you have a parent, they're going to act like it. You really won't be able to tell any difference, especially off the bat. It's so close to reality, it's just really hard to tell if it's even real or if it's not. And you're already so excited that you made it back to reality that you won't even be thinking of that. The people who enter level negative 399 will truly believe that it's their home, but they're still trapped in the hellscape of the backrooms. This level is very philosophical in design because it begs the question, is it better to live a life of ignorance and live inside this level, or is it better to know that you're not actually at home and then you're still in the backrooms and let it haunt you for eternity? Which one of those seems better? I'm not sure to be honest. Level negative 399 is not fully inescapable though. You can get out of it. Although it does take the appearance of Earth and it seems to be able to copy everything from your life, like your house, your school, your work, and everything like that, it only does so for a few hundred up to a thousand miles. Because after you get outside of that radius, things will begin to look off. Something just won't feel right, and you'll start to notice it eventually if you travel. Small details will be wrong on road signs, and names on the TV will be misspelled, and, and pictures of people will start to get blurry and blacked out, and everything will just seem fake. The facade of that reality will start to crumble before your eyes, and you'll begin to think something's not right here. The happiness that you had when you first got here will start to fade, and you'll slowly and terribly start to realize that you're still trapped. Now, the best way to realize that negative 399 is fake is by trying to board a plane and fly across an ocean or to another country in this level. Because once you're up in the air, you'll notice that the ground below you and the oceans below you are glitchy and the environments below you are missing chunks. 
almost like a Minecraft world where something's not rendered in. Instead, there will be just black void spots or glitches, and you can jump through these glitches to get to different levels. But yeah, that was the basic description of Negative 399. It's a carbon copy of your life from Earth that seems to be real for a while and for a specific radius until you travel far outside of it. Then the differences will be small and become bigger and bigger. And eventually you realize that it's all a fake Truman Show type thing that is completely and utterly not real. Now I want to read a few paragraphs at the end of the document that really put into perspective why this level is indeed called the cruelest trick played on mankind. It reads like this, quote, One within this unimaginable horror might take notice that they, and everybody else, has a strange reluctance to travel. Although they might think it strange, eventually the level will implant itself in their mind, seeking to preserve itself. For if one travels far enough oceans away, say, or better yet, towards the stars, they'll notice things visibly being off. Patches of the world are gone, leading straight to the void. Jump down in one of them, and you will escape. A world of falseness, of nothingness. A universe of lies for a universe of insanity. The pain of knowing that there is nothing to see you, and knowing that if you do escape, you will simply return back to square one, back to the back rooms. But truth and pain over bliss and lies? That's the question. But sometimes the wall between this new hell and the one you left becomes weaker. Imagine, if you will, yourself. It has been, oh, let's say, five years since you entered and exited the back rooms. You have never told your family, your spouse, and your children about your journeys. They will laugh at you or be worried for your mental state. It's a brick upon your chest, but it's manageable. You're on a trip, not too far from home, naturally, with travel being so dangerous. Let's say the Rocky Mountains of Colorado. You and your family are staying at a hotel, one that reminds you with a shudder of another, but that's in the past, right? It's your second night, you've just gotten back from a long day of sightseeing and wonder. Ever since you existed, you've loved the mountains. Almost every other place on earth will forever be associated with the twisted, dark version of itself lurking in unreality. Suddenly you hear it, a scream. Your daughter in the hotel room next door is screaming in terror. Suddenly the scream stops with a frightening crunch. You're terribly panicked. What has happened? You race to the door separating you and your spouse's room and the kids' room. You're unfathomably thankful that your son was sleeping with you, but the door won't open. Racing out the door, not caring that you left your key card in the room, you turn with speed that you didn't know you had. Your gun, a dear relic of your travels, in your hand, locked and loaded, safety off. The door is locked, you blast it and kick it down wasting precious ammunition. You can hear other residents of the hallway screaming, saying that there is a gunman here. Call 911. But you don't care about what others think. You just want to make sure your child is safe and sound. Bursting into the room, you're not sure what to expect. But no, it isn't a murderer or some creep who came to take your daughter's life. It's not even human. It's a disembodied, floating face with glowing white eyes and a massive, massive, gleaming, pointed face. Lurking in the darkness. And underneath it is the lifeless body of your nine-year-old daughter, with a large piece of flesh has been torn from her chest, and where her happy-go-lucky face once was is a long, curved slice across her open mouth and rosy cheeks. A monstrous, wicked smile. No, it can't be, you think to yourself. As it approaches you with inhuman speed, drawn by the lights outside the room, you fire away with all your remaining ammunition, but it keeps coming. With it just inches away, you remember something. You lunge towards the door, barely diving out of its way before it can adjust course. You close it, pull out your phone and turn on the flashlight, waving it at the abomination. It screams out the cry of a satisfied hunter, and is likely inches away when you throw the bait towards the window. It flies out the window, breaking it as it disappears into the night. The monster chases it. How? How could a smiler have come here? They were only in. That's when it hits you. You never left. All your memories, all your friends, even your experiences with your children, they're all fake. You can hear footsteps, the cocks of loaded guns outside the door. Police! You hear. Open up! But why open up? You have nothing left to live for. Sobbing, you look down at the barrel, 
one more bullet left. This bullet is for you. End quote. And that is it for that amazing, happy story time. But as you can see, this entire level is like this cruel trick that is played on people who think they're escaping the backrooms. They get to live life, but it's still not real. And that story is just one example. I believe it's the worst level that you could possibly get stuck in ever, especially because you really couldn't tell it wasn't real. It would be like the Truman Show, but for your own personal thing. And you could either choose to leave it and give back to the back rooms, or you could choose to stay and be stuck in a fake life, knowing that it's close enough to your real life to almost be worth it, but knowing deep down it's not. Might as well go back to the back rooms at that point. It is the only reality that you actually have now. All right, that was it for the video. Thank you for watching. This one speaks for itself. This is a horrifying level. If you want more horrifying levels, leave a like. You all tend to like these kind of videos anyway, so I would appreciate it if you did. And um, I got nothing else to say. Short outro today. Thank you so much for watching. Love and appreciate you all. And tell somebody that you love them too, because life is too short not to. And with all that said, I'll see you later. Peace.